Hello everyone, uh, Proof here from Rookie Cards Plus, and uh, among Freedomizer Radio and some other things I do here, I wanted to start a new channel on Rumble, which we did for Rookie Cards Plus. I'll throw this over on YouTube also, but I'm primarily on Rumble uh, because of freedom of speech issues on uh, most notably the radio show that I run on Freedomizer Radio. Anyway... I want to have some pointed discussions here, and everything's not going to be perfect, uh, but I want to give you my opinion of the Cleveland Indians infield position right now. And I want to talk about prospects, because I've been a big prospector of rookies since the mid-1980s, and I love the challenge. And... I have to plan for 2022. I figured let's have this on video. And I want to take some discussions, and I'll have some other discussions <coughs> with various farm systems later on. This is just one take proof. I don't have uh, a big studio or... I haven't learned Shotcut yet, so you just get one take proof. And let's go ahead here. So... Obviously, we have uh, this dude people heard of, Jose Ramirez. That's his uh, his rookie from 20... Wait, is it? No, it's not his rookie. I thought I grabbed his rookie. Well, it is 2014. Anyway, uh, yeah, it is. It's his rookie. It's his symbol right there. So that's his finest X-Fractor there. That's the GOAT as far as third base goes with the Indians, and I'll say he's better. I would take Jose Ramirez over Jim Tomei uh, seven days a week personally. I just love what Jose Ramirez has done. Even though Jim Tomei is a Hall of Famer, I think that Jose Ramirez has potential to get there. And I like the constant 30-30 that you're going to get or somewhere close. And defensively, Jose's picked it up recently. His cards are severely undervalued. I think that he's the possibly the most undervalued player in baseball cards right now. So, Jose Ramirez, I'm a huge buy on that. And then I want to get into the rest of the infield right now because I know some people have said that they could poach Jose Ramirez from the Indians. And I don't know about that, because Jose is inexpensive enough, <coughs> and I just think that he wants to stay in Cleveland. Cleveland would like to keep him. He's not one of those just yet that is demanded he gets $50 million a year or he's out. So we'll see how it plays out. Odds are it's Cleveland, and they'll get rid of him at some point, but... It's a very team-friendly uh, financial salary right now. So they could get a huge haul, but when you're changing your name from the Indians to the Guardians, you had a, a kind of a down year. You finished 80 and 82. You want to build some identity. Jose Ramirez isn't going to break the bank unless somebody's going to give you uh, way more than what uh, a King's Ransom would be. Uh, I don't think you make that move. So, with that, uh, they do have more than enough infielders to cover Jose Ramirez, but I really hope that they don't. I don't expect them to right this second. And last year was just injuries from basically everybody on the squad. If their pitching staff is somewhat healthy, that, that that's a playoff team. So that and they got to get their offense uh, picked up here. I think that Cleveland will pick up at least an outfielder. Let me get into some other cards here. So uh, Bobby Bradley. I prospected on this guy. Uh, there's There might be a shadow there, so you might not get a good view, but we'll see when I upload. Anyway... I expected him to do a lot more than he did. He is going to have a very short leash in 2022. And if he can't cut it, 
then I see them moving Owen Miller permanently to first base, which they used a lot of him at first base last year. At AAA, he performed very well. He was basically a 300 hitter, good defense. He doesn't hit much for power, but hey, I'm the guy that says if you can get on base, someone will bring you in. And it just seems like batting average doesn't matter anymore. And that guy, Owen Miller, <coughs> while he may be serviceable for a year, I just don't think he's the permanent answer either. And he really has to pick it up. Or he's going to be a utility slash uh, backup. He'll be... Yeah, he just turned 25. So he's past the prospect stage. So now you have all these prospects that are playing basically the same position that are about ready at the same time. So the one that's the most valuable of them all is Gabriel Arias. So I like him. He's, what, 21 years old, played AAA last year. Keep in mind the shortstop position is where the Guardians now are, are stacked. They have Ahmed Rosario, who I can't believe is still listed as a common rookie. If you look at 2018 or even some of his, his Bowman stuff before then. But he what hit over 280, good defense, played every day, basically. He was the mainstay in last year's offense. And he didn't do anything to not warrant staying at shortstop, uh, Ahmed Rosario. He could play the outfield now. And then you have Andres Jimenez, who I didn't grab a card of. And... He didn't do all that well in the major leagues. The minor leagues, he was all right. I'm not saying that he tore it up. He, once again, uh, right around 300. Not much power, but it's a shortstop position, so it's okay. Although it seems like shortstops now have a premium power position. I wouldn't invest on on Andres Jimenez. Uh, I can't believe he goes for a higher price than Ahmed Rosario. If you can pick up good Ahmed Rosarios for... I'm talking like Bowman Chrome Refractor for less than a buck, I think they're worth it. I, I wouldn't go way more than that, but I, I think you could do a lot worse than a Bowman Chrome 2017 Refractor for, say, 50 cents. I, if I see it, I'm going to buy it. But Gabriel Arias is 21, hit well in AAA. He's probably the most ready shortstop that can make it if they want to push Ahmed Rosario out into the outfield. Because personally, I think the Indians are going to put somebody in the outfield in the in the infield, and they're probably going to sign somebody. Somebody that can hit for some power, because that outfield is weak. I am so glad they picked up Miles Straw in the outfield. So they got the center field down. I think they moved somebody into the outfield of, of all these middle infielders that are about ready. And then they signed somebody... And Fran Meal stays at the DH. First base, like I just said, is a little suspect with Bradley and Owen Miller. I just can't believe out of both of those, one of them didn't claim the job. They also have Yu Chang, which didn't hit well at all last year, but he's a utility guy. And towards the end of the year, he started heating up and made his numbers look somewhat respectable. Maybe that's a first base option. I don't think so, but he's not bad. 
He's just not good. He's average. He's more average than Bobby Bradley and Owen Miller. And Bradley, if he can harness his power and get his batting average up to at least 240, then, yeah, he's salvageable. I, I want that threat. But he he's not cutting it. Uh, so Gabriel Arias, I think... I think he could stick with the big league club right out of spring training. It's going to be between him and Andres Jimenez, I think, at second base. And uh, I, I'm excluding Nolan Jones out of this. He could be a, a third base, uh, but you have Jose Ramirez, unless they're trading, but Nolan Jones hit, what, 238 with minimal power, uh, I, I'm not sold on Nolan. It, it, they needed him last year in Cleveland. They needed production in AAA, and notice he did not get a call-up. He he didn't do it. And he's 25, about to be 26. I think he flies off the radar here. He has to show in spring training that he can win the job or be somewhat close and knocking on the door, and maybe he could push Oscar Mercado or Bradley Zimmer onto the waiver wire and take one of the spots from one of them, but I don't know. So, the next one with the most potential here, and I'm not saying to buy this particular card. He does have other Bowman uh, first. I just grabbed any old Tyler Freeman because I couldn't find a Bowman first of him. He hit 323 in double A last year. And he he's a shortstop just like everybody else here that I'm going to discuss. <clears throat> I think they slide him over to third base eventually, but are you going to move J-Ram? And that, I guess that's what everything is here because with J-Ram if he stays, yeah, you've got a legitimate playoff threat. Otherwise, you got Tyler Freeman maybe a third, Ahmed Rosario in the outfield, you got Arias at short, and then another guy that might be ready at some point soon is Brian Rocchio. And he plays second and short. I really don't want to see an all-new infield of Nolan Jones at first, even though he hasn't played there, but so what? Uh, you have you have him at first, you got Rocchio at second, you got Arias at short, and Freeman at third base. It just sounds like a disaster for now. And I don't think they go there, but I, I think they bring in one rookie to start and I think that's Arias, but Rocchio could take that second base spot. He was, once again, he was in high A and then double A uh, last year. And does he leapfrog Tyler Freeman because he plays second base? Or can they move Ahmed Rosario to second? Or can they move Tyler Freeman to second? That's all legitimate questions. So... Another guy that I don't have a card of, because he doesn't have a Major League card, he had a Panini Contenders or a Donruss Elite, which is uh, Richard Palacios. I don't know why somebody's trying to call me on Spybook now, and I don't even have a microphone hooked up to my desktop. This is to make videos. So, anyway... Uh, Richard Palacios, I see him being somebody that goes to the outfield. I think he's one of those second base slash outfielders, and uh, he did enough so that they had to put him on the 40-man roster. He, he gave like 270 in double A, second base outfield. Not much power. None of these guys have a ton of power, and none of them really project to have power, but... Palacios' dad played in the majors, and I think that his bat plays well. So, someone maybe a year or two out, 
Jose Tanya, and he put himself on the map. I love this as a huge buy. In the minors, he's a 2020 guy with 300 uh, batting average. Great defense. He pretty much, in my opinion, became a star in the Arizona Fall League this year. He lit the Arizona Fall League on fire. I'm a huge buy on Jose Tanya. I think that Jose Tanya could hit Triple A this year. He's on the 40 man roster. And he could knock on the door in 2023. Uh, if there were 40 man rosters still, I would say maybe he's a September call up. Uh, but I think you're getting a good value with Jose Tanya. And maybe Jose gives them confidence to slide Tyler Freeman to third base and trade J Ram. I hate to see that, but Jose Tenya, I think, if it wasn't for the 2020 pandemic, I think we'd be talking about him sliding in uh, at some point this year. But because of the, the logjam at those second base shortstop positions in Cleveland, he's going to hit triple A. He might have to start the year in double A, even though uh, I think he's triple A worthy. And then you move on down the farm here, and I'm just going to show both of these cats at once here, if uh, if the sun will let me here. Uh, so Milan Tolentino right here, and, and then you got Carson Tucker, who are way down in A ball. Uh, you're going to see, they, I think both of them finished in high A last year, or Carson Tucker might have been low A. So Milan, I think technically is one grade ahead. Neither of them I, I see as huge power threats. Uh, uh, Milan Tolentino, his dad, Jose Tolentino, played... Uh, where was he? He was an elf, not an outfielder. He was a second baseman, I think, for... What was it? The Astros? Uh, for like a year, uh, maybe a year and a half. He, he didn't play long. And then Carson Tucker, his brother is Cole Tucker, who's in the Pirates organization. Those are two three-year projects down the road. Um, I think Carson Tucker is a decent deal. Doll, you know I don't have a cell phone. Uh, I don't know why you're trying to call me on this. Anyway, my... Uh, my station manager for Freedomizer is trying to call me. I'm going to have to cut this short. Uh, they have Gabriel Martinez also in in the rookie ball. So uh, 